For any Christian out there who may hear this, I ask you, are you homesick for heaven or is your home in this world right now? Physically, our lives will remain here for a short while longer, but does your spirit even now long to soar home and be with your Savior, or are your affections still entrenched in the things of this world? The children where we are staying sing a song I hadn't heard before. It's called The World Is Not My Home, and I really like it. There will be a link to this song with the words in the description, but the chorus goes like this. O oh Lord, you know I have no friend like you. If heaven's not my home, then Lord, what will I do? The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Amen. There is a blessedness we experience within that accompanies the longing to be home in heaven with our Savior, the Lord Jesus. This professing church of the last days is a worldly church with a form of godliness that denies him. It is also the friend to all the world surrounding it, and as such, it is God's enemy. It is time for us to choose the right side to be on, brethren. The Bible says that God has made his children to be a peculiar treasure for himself six times, and that we are but strangers and pilgrims upon the earth. And so we are, in fact, just passing through, and this world is truly not our home. It is good to be thankful for all the mercies God shows us, and they are many. Yet still we should admit to ourselves that there is much evil in this world that we all suffer from. And it will be far better when we have the trappings of our fleshly existence traded for our eternal home with the Lord. This is why certain scriptures focus on the merits of mourning, death, and hating our lives in this world. Ecclesiastes 7.1 actually says that the day of one's death is better than the day of their birth. And this agrees with Philippians 1.23, which tells us it is far better to depart and be with Jesus than to live. But does every Christian really know this truth within themselves? 2 Corinthians 5 goes even further and indicates how we as believers groan, wishing to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. For God says of those in eternity with him that they shall hunger no more neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and lead them into fountains of living waters. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. It sounds like an unimaginably great future to me, one for which I gladly trade the miseries of our present world. But believe it or not, there are plenty of people who really don't desire this, at least if they were honest with themselves. It is for them that this world is the actual trophy, and heaven is what they'll settle for when their bodies finally give out. They are not willing to let go of their present-day pleasures for the future eternal ones. To follow after Jesus with all of our being does mean to forsake all that we have here on this earth. But God will provide all we truly need in this present life when we put him first, and we must not trade eternal glory for the present petty pleasures we now hold so dear. The deceased missionary to the Alka Indians, Jim Elliott, once said, A man is no fool to trade that which he cannot keep in order to gain that which he cannot lose. And so what will it be for us? Let us examine ourselves before the Lord to be sure we are in the faith. And please be sure to examine these scriptures found in the description below for help with that and find out how we're measuring up. Let us pray with the psalmist that God would search our hearts and our thoughts and reveal any wicked way in us, and that he then would lead us into the way of life everlasting. I pray that God would bless this to your use. Have a good day.